Welcome to r slash choosing beggars where YouTubers are expected to pay their fans thousands of dollars. Our first post is from generic B word. Hey, is this blank? Yes, it sure is. Cool. I got your info from blank. I saw your stuff at the zine fair and I really dig it. Oh, well, thank you. It's always nice to find people who like my work. I was hoping I could get a copy. Sure. Hold on. Let me send you the link. Actually, hoping to get a copy from you. Okay, cool. I totally get that. You're in luck. I still have a couple from my last shipment. They're 15 bucks each. I can meet you somewhere near the cultural center to pick up. Well, if you let me have it, I'll shout you out on my Insta. I'm sure you'd get mad sales. Your stuff is fire. I'm actually not giving out any free books right now. I'm only selling them for 15 bucks because I got a larger shipment and that was my sale price at the fair. Normally, they're 20 bucks each if I'm bringing it to someone. Seriously? You're gonna complain over 15 bucks? If it's no big deal, then you can pay for it, yeah? I'm good. I only hit you up because I wanted to help your stupid business. Teach me to try to be a good guy. You'd get so much exposure. Yes, but I work for money, not likes. Your work is trash. Okay, well, just let me know if you change your mind. You have the website if you want to order off there. Always thankful for the input. Jerk, you should be nice to customers. Okay, if I speak to one, I will be. You're a dick. You know, a lot of people ask me how my channel blew up so quickly and I got 800k subscribers in like two or three months. My secret is that in the very early days of my channel, I gave a bunch of money to someone on Instagram with 200 followers and they shouted me out and I blew up. Our next post is from Hexum Zexy. My ex and I separated 11 years ago, and at the time, we weren't doing so great financially. However, within the last six to seven years, I started a business which has done much better than expected. My ex-wife remarried, but they have been struggling to make ends meet. I usually pay a decent amount more in child support than I legally have to pay, and my wife and I have a decent enough relationship these days. My son's 17th birthday was a couple of days ago, and since he got his license last month, I decided to get him a car. I did discuss this with my ex, and I told my ex I was thinking of getting my son a car, and she thought it was a great idea since he splits his time between our houses and we live about 45 minutes apart. I decided to splurge a little for his birthday especially because he's been doing great in school and I felt he deserved it. So I got him a 340i and I invited my wife and her family over to my house. We could surprise him with it. Quick aside, for those who don't know, a 340i costs about 50k. But when she found out what car I'd gotten him, she freaked out. She told me it was unfair that I'd gotten him a BMW while she drove a Civic and she thought I was trying to undermine her which was not my intention at all. She was incredibly pissed and kept saying it wasn't fair that my son got a new car while she drove an older car. She said that she assumed I would get him some old beater or something. According to her, I could have just given them the money since that would help them out a lot more. The way I see it is I have no obligation to be paying more than I already do for them and their finances are irrelevant to me. If I want to get my son something nice, I should be able to. Alright, so the wife saying you should have given me the $50,000 is clearly absurd. That being said, I do kind of understand where she's coming from. Giving a 17 year old a $50,000 BMW is a little bit nuts. Also, I don't know, buying that kid a car kinda feels like a power play to stick it to the ex. I mean, the wife can't afford to do things like that, so the car will be a constant reminder to both the ex-wife and the kid that the dad is more successful. So, what do you guys think? Do you think the dad made kind of a douchey move here? Let me know down in the comments. Our next post is from Chemical Uprising. So for a little bit of context on this one, OP made sweets for a friend's baby shower and the friend paid a 10% deposit. But three weeks later, they still haven't paid. 
Hi Sharon, how was your baby shower? I hope you had a wonderful time. I was just wondering, what is happening with your payment for the cake and cookies my husband kindly dropped off on my behalf? If cash is too difficult, feel free to transfer the money into my account. Well, 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 if it isn't you. You only message me when you want something. Oh, well, since you decided not to come to my baby shower, I decided not to pay you the rest of the money. Tough cookies. Sorry, I did, however, message you the night before to let you know I had a funeral the same day and couldn't make it. Considering my husband dropped off the sweets to you as requested and free of charge, I might add, I need to be paid. I will resend my bank details so that you can pay the rest of the money tonight. Thanks. Look, I'm not paying you. I invited you to be nice and you didn't show up, so that's your problem. This will count as your gift to me. I'm not giving you the $100. You can get effed. Plus, I've already paid the deposit, so you have just about half. You don't need any more. You're being greedy. I'm having a baby here and need all the money I can get, so tough cookies. Do not contact me again or I will call the police. You know what? You're extremely entitled for someone I barely know. My own family doesn't even ask for discounts and have never flat out refused to pay me. I will just ask Denise to help me sort this issue out if you can't be civil about it. Regardless, someone will be paying me the remaining amount. Congratulations once again on your pregnancy. I hope everything runs smoothly. Listen here, you effing grunt. You better watch what you say to me or you're not getting another freaking cent out of me. If you think you are, you're wrong. Saw it off and don't bother my family or myself again. Got that? I have called the police for your information. Sleep with one eye open, grunt. I would love to hear that police call. Hello, police? I've stolen from someone and now they want their money and it's making me scared. Please protect me. Our next post is from LucaNo007. Hey man, can you help me? Bro. Yeah, sure. What you need help with? Okay, so basically, I have a lot of talent to become YouTuber, but I need money for new graphics card to make videos. So, you need money from me? Yes, I need $800. Trust me, bro, I will become a famous. Uh, do I know you? Yes, bro, I follow you and you're funny in that, so I give you shout out when I get a million subscribers. Sorry, but I don't give $5 to random people on the internet, let alone $800. But bro, I follow you, and I swear I will make so good videos. Sorry, but I don't want to give you money. If you don't give me money, I unfollow. Um, okay. Bro, but I make good videos, bro. Please, my mom has cancer. Sorry to hear about your mom, but I don't think a new graphics card will help her. Okay, bro. F you, bro. Kill yourself, inward idiot, effing grunt, butthole, <laughs> butthole, F word, gay, effing inward. I hope you die of cancer like my mom. She dies soon, and you will die too, idiot, effing, F word, inward, and I unfollow. Oh no, please don't unfollow. I'm begging you. Send me your PayPal and I will send you 1k right now. Really bro? It's blank. Thank you so much. I be so famous and I give you a shout out bro. I love you. Lol. <laughs> I just did the math out of curiosity. If I owed $800 to every single one of my subscribers, I would owe $685 million. So I was thinking, instead of giving each of my fans $800, I should just give one super fan $685 million. So let me hear from you down in the comments why you think you totally deserve that much free money from someone you've never met.
Our next post is from Squeaks92. So about a year ago, I started working as a store manager for a company that would send me around to different stores in the area to fix them up nice. I would go through paperwork and make sure everything was up to date, throw out trash, and take care of the expired products. I would put in work orders for damaged displays, so on and so forth. A few months ago, I met my match. This store was a mess. Paperwork and expired product aside, the previous store manager was also using the back room as a storage unit. Waffle makers, face paint, 90s CDs, a ton of things just stored in boxes in the back room. And we aren't talking a couple small boxes either. There were maybe six four foot by four foot boxes and a bunch of smaller ones. There were managers between her and I, so those items had been sitting back there since May 2018, and it was now February 2019. I was focusing on the store and operations, and that's where my priorities were, but mostly because I had no way of contacting this woman, and I was focused on the store and my job. One day, mid-February, I get a call from a woman. I answer the phone with a typical phone greeting. Company in town, this is me. Hi, I'm sure you've heard all about me, but I was wrongly fired because Bossman is crazy and sexist and hates women. And I was the best thing to happen to that store. I'm the reason it's still running and more rantings and ravings about things I have no knowledge of. And Mike said you were cool, but I guess you're not. And I guess I'm going to have to sue you as well. So who should I serve the papers to? I'm sorry, what? The only thing I've ever said to this woman is what I said above. I just want my belongings and you're not going to give them to me, so who are you so I can serve you papers? Um, I'm sorry that all that happened to you, but we really don't need to go that far. I just took over this store and would love to help you come pick up your items. What day are you free to do so so I can schedule double coverage and help you move things? Well, I only really need my waffle maker and my face paints right now, and I don't have a truck to come get them. Okay, I'll call boss man and see what he says I can do. Fine, here's my number. After hanging up with her, I called boss man and he gave me the go ahead to hire her a U-Haul on the company dime to help her out. He was being more than reasonable after the horrendous things she said about him. Just my opinion. For context, I've known Bossman for years. He's a super nice man that will help anyone who asks. Yeah, he's a little sharp around the edges, but it's just how he does his job. He was my boss previously, and that's how I got into this company that I'm working in now. After calling her back, I told her what Bossman said, and she flipped out. Are you serious? I'm a single mother and I sprained my wrist and I can't unload a U-Haul truck by myself. You will hire a moving crew to come bring my items to me and you will have them move my items carefully into my house. I'm sorry, but I cannot do that. Bossman gave me the go ahead to get you a U-Haul and that's it. I'm more than happy to help you load it. I'm not giving boss man or you my address because you'll probably stalk me. I'm kind of done at this point. Lady, I'm just trying to help you. I want your items gone as badly as you claim to want them. So this is me doing my best to make this work. But I can't help you if you don't meet me halfway. She said she was going to call the police and hung up. Afterwards, she kept calling my store saying she was coming to get her items and then just wouldn't show up. And she kept threatening to get the police involved, but never did. Finally, I had enough and I called the authorities just to ask them what I should do. The last thing I want is to do the wrong thing or irritate the wrong person, so I just wanted to make sure I was thorough. They told me to give her 30 days to come get her items, and if she didn't, they were to be discarded. They told me to get it in writing, and I mentioned Lady won't give me her address. They said I could text or email it to her, and that would work fine. I texted it to her because that's the only method I had to contact her. Hello lady, I just got off the phone with Bossman and the police department and they said I can legally give you a 30 day notice to come pick up your things. If you don't, then they will be discarded. So, this is your 30 day notice to come claim your items before I discard them. I even gave her a halfway notice when I haven't heard from her in a while. Hello, just a reminder that you have 14 days left to pick up your things before they are discarded. 
I was eating a burrito with my boyfriend at 9.30 p.m. and I get a text. Someone will pick my things up tomorrow at around 2. Have all the boxes ready out the front of the store. Thanks. I understand what you are saying, but I don't feel comfortable leaving your belongings outside. I will bring them down the stairs for you so they are easily accessible when you walk through the door, and I will have double coverage so I can help load stuff into the vehicle. I'm sure you've already heard about how Sally has been stalking me for over a year. I won't come into the store because she has a gun. Leave my things outside so the movers can get them. Sally is a store manager at another location. Sally no longer works here, so I can guarantee you that that is not an issue, if it once was. I honestly do not know what happened between you and others, but I don't want to be held liable if something from your belongings gets taken by someone else. So to cover my own butt, I will bring them down the stairs when I get to work tomorrow, and I will help bring them outside when the movers get there, but I will not just leave your items outside the store all day. My special needs kiddo is going to be helping tomorrow with all his schoolmates. Please just dump my things on the sidewalk. I'm sorry, but I'm not leaving your items outside. I will bring them down the stairs and you can come in and get them. Or they will be forfeited on the previously discussed day. I cannot allow that to happen unless we all know that Sally is truly gone. I'm not sending people into that store if they are going to get shot at. In my head, I'm thinking, you're afraid of being shot and still bringing your child? Well, I work there every day and I have yet to get shot at. If you feel too threatened to walk into the store, you can call the police station and request an officer be present. Otherwise, that's how things are going. Are you actually acting like the Sally thing didn't happen? I worked there for four years and had way worse things happen to me than being shot at. Let's make this really easy. Is Sally still working at your company? You should pack everything into normal size boxes so I can fit them into my car before Sally kills us all. It's okay. I'm going to ask for an officer to be present anyway, just for both of us to be put at ease a bit. Is Sally still working for company? Just want to make sure the police know who they should be looking out for. I will fill them in on the whole situation. So, you knowingly lied about Sally's employment, even though you know a special needs child will be there tomorrow. I did not. I told you Sally doesn't work at my store anymore. I will make the police aware of what's going on in great detail, from my side and my side only, and that is it. After she just kept saying, you lied about Sally, and I just stopped responding. I texted her at 1pm asking for a heads up when she was on the way, and she didn't respond. I was scheduled to leave at 3 to keep from going into overtime, and 2.30 rolls around and still nothing. I text her at 3 telling her I'm leaving for the day and if she decides to come get her items to give me a 24 hour notice so I can ask for an officer to be present. She then freaked out out the moving company just got here and they're already paid for you're really going to make me lose hundreds of dollars when you agreed to let me pick my things up today i just told her to come get her things and i'll stay late i called for an officer to be present and i showed him the messages while we were waiting for her to show up lady walks in without seeing all the boxes and goes that's not all of it you stole my vacuum and art supplies and she turns to the officer. She texted me saying she would put all the boxes out front and didn't. Just so you know that she's a pathological liar. I have hardwood floors and no artistic talent, so no, I did not. Also, he read all the messages. Silence. She just starts loading boxes. The officer says, okay, you make a list of all the things that aren't here and we will look for them later. There's so much more to this, but it's exhausting me just talking about it. Turns out this lady made a hate page for the company and full on slanders poor Sally online when all Sally ever did was work for her. Anyway, I'm not really 100% certain where this goes in the Reddit world, but I thought maybe this was accurate. It's a little bit of everything, and if anyone wants to know the rest of the details, I'm more than happy to give them. Yes, OP, please tell me how this ends, otherwise I'm going to have to send Sally to come get you.
That was r slash choosing beggars, and if you think you're entitled to me paying you $685 million, I want to hear your justification for it down in the comments. Tell me why you deserve it.